Well, good morning. I give you a warm welcome this Easter Sunday morning. As we gather together, we want to just say some words together this morning, just uh, by way of a declaration of the truth and the reality of the resurrection of Jesus. So the words that appear in bold on the screen, you can say, and the other words that I'll lead you in. Christ is risen. Alleluia. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. It is fitting that the heavens should rejoice and that the earth should be glad and that the whole world, both visible and invisible, should keep the feast. For Christ is risen, the everlasting joy. Now all things are filled with light. Heaven and earth and all places under the earth, all creation celebrates the resurrection of Christ. I give you a warm welcome to our service today on this special day for us as believers, this Easter Sunday, this Resurrection Sunday. And today we praise and worship and glorify our God as we do every Sunday. But today we remember afresh his resurrection. Jesus Christ is alive. He's our saviour, but he's also our Lord. Friday looked so dark, so black. But Sunday is also glorious and light bursts forth from the tomb. So in your situation today, maybe you're in a season of darkness where things seem difficult, things seem hopeless. But we're going to consider more about that later on in the service. That it may be Friday for you, but Sunday's coming. The good news of Easter weekend is that we have a hope in Christ and things will always be better ahead for the believer. God's on the throne. God's in control. Please go online and check out the website and find out what's going on within the life of the church via the bulletin, which you can download, the church magazine. Appreciate all the work that go into uh, those um, documents, the bulletin and the magazine. And um, also on our social media pages, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, you can find out information about the life of the church. Keep up to date with what's going on. Keep connected with your church family. Um, but we want to just pray just now as we prepare our hearts to come and sing and worship God. Let's pray. Lord God, I just thank you for your goodness to us. Thank you, Lord God, in all seasons that you're king and that you are the one who's on the throne and that you hold all things together. Thank you, Jesus, that you're the same yesterday, today, and forever and you've promised that you will never leave us that you're with us always even to the end of the age what a wonderful wonderful truth that we celebrate today that christ is risen he is risen indeed god we just pray that you would help us to understand more and more of what that means for us in our lives we thank you for the gospel Thank you for the power of the good news of Jesus Christ. Thank you for the hope that we find in Christ for this life and for the next. Lord, lead us in our time together, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's sing together and worship God. Follow 
shouting I know that happened but he's alive he's he's alive I went to the tomb I was crying and the stone it, it wasn't there it was empty I went in I looked up and there there was two angels one at his head and one at his feet I didn't know what to say. I just kept crying and shouting, Jesus, Jesus, where have you gone? Where did they take you? I just, I just wanted to find him. I wanted to go and say goodbye, you know? I just, and I turned around and th there was this man. I thought it was a gardener. So I said, look, just tell me where he is. Just just tell me where he is and, and I'll find him. I'll, I'll bring him back and, and I'll look after him. But please just tell me where he is. But it wasn't a gardener, it was Jesus. Jesus is alive. He is alive. And he wants me to go and tell them. But what do I tell them? We all saw him. We all saw him die in front of us. We, we saw it. I don't think they'll believe me. But I need to. I need to tell them. My Lord told me I need to tell them. There's no worrying anymore. He's going to be, he's going to the Father. He's, this is life changing. This is amazing. He's alive. He's actually alive, my Lord. He's not dead. He's alive. I'll tell you how it goes. I don't know if they'll believe me, but Jesus will help me. I know he will. He'll help me. It's a great joy today as part of the service, the in-person service, to be baptising four people. Uh, Duncan and Wendy McPhail will be baptised. Gavin Baxter and Chris Burns. They're all going to be baptised today at the in-person service um, on Easter Sunday at Viewfield Baptist Church. But as part of this online service, three of those folks have recorded um, an online video a video for you to hear just a little bit of their testimony and please remember them please be praying for them as they are baptized today as they declare to follow Jesus that he's their Lord he's their Savior and uh, as they're baptized today um, it'll be a picture of what Christ has done for them it's a picture of his death 
it's a picture as they're under the water of his burial and it's a picture as he comes out of the water of his glorious resurrection in that work that Christ has done for them, for us. We also see a picture of what he's done in their life. It's a picture of the burial and death of their old life of sin and coming out the water is a picture of rising to new life. Uh, and it's all possible because Jesus Christ is the Son of God because he died, because he rose again. So let's listen to these testimonies just now and just be encouraged and please be praying for these folks today and tomorrow and for all their tomorrows in terms of their following of Jesus Christ. So let's watch the testimonies now. Hi everyone, I'm Wendy. I was five when I was told I was going to Sunday school at the local Salvation Army. I cried. I didn't want to go to school on a Sunday. After that first day, I loved it though. Throughout my childhood and teenage years, I went to a few different churches with my parents and, fa and brother. By 16 though, I felt it was getting a bit boring and by my late teens, I didn't go at all. But I didn't ever stop believing that God existed, even though I liked the pub much better than church at the time. That was the case until my early 30s, until health problems put a stop to my career as a nurse. It was when I was coming out of that difficult period that I felt the need to find a church to go to. But after trying a few of them, I just didn't find one that was a good fit. And as a result, my beliefs waxed and waned at this time. It wasn't until my 40s that things to do with God made a lot more sense and that my beliefs got stronger. It wasn't a big booming voice from the sky or a giant lightning bolt hurling from the sky, but a gradual realisation that God was always there through the bad times and the good, and that what I was believing was true. So I did the Alpha and Discipleship course here at um, Viewfield Baptist Church and felt it was now was the right time to be baptised so here I am thank you Hi everyone I'm Duncan when I was young my mother took me to church and I believed in God from as far back as I can remember but as a teenager spending time in church just did not interest me I of course felt that I knew better and when I was able to choose for myself I stopped going preferring to spend time doing things that serve my own interests, usually involving a lot of alcohol. I was living quite selfishly, only in extreme circumstances doing anything to help others, and didn't even think there was anything wrong with that. I wasn't actively doing anything bad, or hurting anyone, just only really caring about myself. So I still believed in God and decided to find out about other religions, but nothing really felt right until I'd gone full circle and came back to Christianity. Then it all fell into place. I can't really explain it other than sometimes you just recognise the truth when it presents itself to you. Following the examples and teachings of Jesus now really gives me a sense of purpose in my existence, and having done Alpha and Discipleship courses here at the youth field has further strengthened my beliefs. Good morning everyone. I'm really pleased to be here this morning and I'm really grateful to friends and to family for coming along and for showing their support and encouragement today. And a big shout out to Nicole for coming along as my sponsor and for reading the Bible verse that I've selected. I've been a part of the church since I was a wee boy and um, my journey with God has been one that has been at times a bit of a roller coaster but ultimately has been one that has brought me peace and a sense of direction in my life. I feel that that journey led me into my current career path. I always felt a real sense of um, calling to serve others and to help people. And being a social worker has allowed me to see people at their best, see people at their worst, but ultimately to see the power of love and care and helping people when they really, really need that help and support. Being baptised today for me is about making that public statement of faith in God. It's about 
being a witness to what God has been able to achieve in my life and I'm really excited today to be taking that step and to be sharing that good news with friends and family and everyone else that's here in attendance. Uh, I'm really grateful to have this opportunity and I'm looking forward to, to moving forward in life having made that commitment to God and to continue to share the love and the peace and the grace of God um, and delivering that message to others that ultimately there is hope beyond death that Jesus did die on the cross that he did come to save us from our sin and that by his actions and by what he has done we are saved thanks for coming and I appreciate you all being here
And now as we continue to worship God, we're going to join together in prayer. Let's pray together. And Lord God, I just thank you for who you are. I thank you that your love is unfailing and that you love forever. It endures forever. Oh God, you're so good to us. And that is ultimately seen in the coming, in the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I thank you that Jesus is the way, the truth and the life that no one can come to God the Father except through him. And God, we do celebrate Jesus today. We thank you that he is the tomb breaker, the world shaker. We thank you that he ascended back to the right hand of the throne of his Father. We thank you that he is coming back again. And Lord, we long for that day when his victory will reach its full consummation. We thank you that the victory is not in doubt. It's been won uh, through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The victory over, over death, over evil, over sin. And Lord, we just thank you that we can know a hope both for this life and for the next life because of what Christ has done for us. He is so good and he's working for our good. Help us to trust him today. Help us to trust and obey him today. And Lord, today we just want to be people who live in that power of the Spirit, that resurrection power that is within us. God, we, we thank you that the Holy Spirit lives within us. We thank you that the Holy Spirit is changing us from the inside out. We thank you that the Holy Spirit um, is producing good fruit within us. And the Holy Spirit anoints us as we serve God. Lord, we want to be men and women of the Spirit. We want to become more like Jesus Christ. So Lord, today, just fill us afresh, we pray. Come and move in this time of worship. Infuse hope into our very soul. Lord God, may we move forward in faith and victory with a confidence in our Lord. God, I thank you that you're for us and not against us. I thank you that you will never leave us nor forsake us. I thank you that you're always working, even when we're not aware of it. That you fight for us. You are fighting our battles. And Lord, simply all you long is that we rest in you. We run to you. We rely on you. We depend on you. God, we do that today afresh. And Lord, we do pray today for those who are in a situation that maybe appears hopeless, where the future just seems bleak. They can't seem to see a, see a way forward. God, I pray that this Resurrection Sunday afresh would, would just remind them of the hope that they have, that they will experience more hope in their life. For those who are grieving, Lord, may you comfort those who mourn. For those who are unwell, Lord, touch them with your healing hand. There is power in the name of Jesus. For those who are worried about family, or family situations, or where there's been a breakdown of relationship, Lord, where possible, may there be humility, repentance, and reconciliation. God, we just pray that you would lead us into all that you have for us. Thank you that your plans are to prosper us and not to harm us, to give us a future and a hope. So Lord, we turn to you now as we turn to your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to just read just a few passages of Scripture today as we're going to be thinking about hope. I want to read first of all from Matthew 27 and verses 57 to 61. So here is the word of the Lord. As evening approached, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph who had himself become a disciple of Jesus. Going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body, and Pilate ordered that it be given to him. Joseph took the body, wrapped it in a clean linen cloth, and placed it in his own new tomb that he had cut out of the rock. He rolled a big stone in front of the entrance to the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were sitting there opposite the tomb. And then I want to read some verses from John. John 20 and verses 10 to 18. John 20 verses 10 to 18. Then the disciples went back to their homes, but Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white 
seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this she turned round and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realise that it was Jesus. Woman, he said, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned towards him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet returned to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am returning to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. And then just a few verses from 1 Corinthians 15 and verses 50 to 55. I declare to you, brothers, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? Where, O oh death, is your sting? Amen. And may God bless the reading and reflection from his word this morning. A man by the name of Rollo May, who, as far as I'm aware, was not a believer in Jesus, wrote a book describing his lifelong quest for beauty. He recalls a scene from a visit to Mount Athos, a peninsula filled with monasteries on the coast of Greece. He stumbled upon an all-night celebration of Easter. Incense hung in the air and the only light came from candles. At the end of the service, the priest stood in front of all the people and declared, Christos Anesti, Christ is risen. Each person present replied according to custom, He is risen indeed. Rollo May writes, I was seized then by a moment of spiritual reality. What would it mean for our world if he had truly risen? What a question. What would it mean for our world if he had truly risen? You know, what does it mean today for us as believers as we, we stand on that truth that he is alive, that he is risen indeed? How should that change the way that we live our lives today? How does that change the way we perceive the future, even perceive death? What difference does it make if it's really true? What would it mean for those struggling with addictions and poverty, hurt and abuse, oppression and injustice, if it's really true that Christ is risen. Surely this can mean new life for every person. Truly this can mean the experience of life in all its fullness. Truly this can mean the reality of eternal life for all who believe. Surely this truth should mean that we are confronted with an amazing mystery, that we are confronted with beauty beyond compare, that we are confronted with hope for the present and amazing hope for the future. And just this morning, I want to mention two clear truths that we can learn from the passages that we read as we think about the resurrection of Jesus and its significance. First of all, we can know hope for the present. I wonder if you've ever seen the film As Good As It Gets. 
In the film, Melvin Uda, played by Jack Nicholson, is being diagnosed with a severe case of obsessive compulsive disorder. His life has become so entrapped that he can no longer step on cracks in the sidewalk or eat with regular utensils at a restaurant. In this pivotal scene in the movie, Melvin demands to see his psychiatrist, Dr. Green, without an appointment. His doctor has no time for him and knows that if he gives in to Melvin's request, it will set Melvin back in his treatments. So the doctor leads Melvin back to the waiting room. Melvin grudgingly gives up the fight, but before he leaves the office, he looks around the waiting room and simply asks all the patients sitting there, what if this is as good as it gets? What if this is as good as it gets? So many people seem to be asking this question these days, post-pandemic, facing again wars in our world, seeing so much suffering, seeing so much difficulty in our world, so much pain. Is this as good as it gets? Or to put it in a less hopeful way, people seem to be saying, we are who we are. And at times, is there really any hope for change, even as people reflect upon their own life, their own situation? We are who we are. Is there any hope for change? Any hope in this life? And what we face within and without? Friends, you know that there's disillusionment with life everywhere we look. Suicide is actually one of the leading causes of death for men under 50 and among teenagers in Britain. There's so much hopelessness in our world. In the Bible we read about a group of people who felt just as hopeless as many of us do in our darkest moments. We read earlier in Matthew 27 verses 57 to 61 the disciples getting Jesus dead body ready for burial. They had so many great hopes about him but there he was dead and they're getting his dead body ready for burial. Their hopes were dashed. Think through how hopeless the disciples must have felt as they got Jesus' dead body cleaned and prepared it for burial and then left it in a closed tomb. It's the end, the finality, hopelessness. You know, I wonder in your life, have you ever felt hopeless? Have you ever thought, is this as good as it gets? Have you ever thought about just giving up? The famous writer Oswald Chambers once wrote, Our Lord begins where we would never begin, at the point of human hopelessness. The greatest blessing a person ever gets from God is the realization that if they are going to enter into his kingdom, it must be through the door of hopelessness. It's when we're at our lowest point, feeling the most hopeless, that Jesus comes to us and he offers us incredible hope in life for the present. It's when we realize our need. We realize that without him, there's no hope. That we realize that that he is the one who can give that hope for this life and the next. That's when our lives will be transformed. So many people are trying to find purpose. They're trying to find meaning. They're trying to find direction in their life. I could tell you today, and I really believe it, that life without Jesus is like an unsharpened pencil. There's no point. That Jesus is the one who gives us meaning and purpose for this life and for the next. It's when we connect with our Creator that we truly find new life. We're born again by the Spirit of God into the family of God. We truly find eternal life. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me, even though they die, they will live again. It's often at our lowest point 
feeling the most hopeless, that Jesus comes and he offers us incredible hope in life for the present. We see a great example of this in Jesus revealing himself to Mary after the resurrection. We see her going from despair to just being overwhelmed with joy. Everything changed in that moment. There seemed utterly no hope. But Jesus met her at that moment and light broke through the darkness. Suddenly there was hope. Suddenly there was a future. Jesus appeared to Mary after being in the tomb for three days. He presented to her the reality of a life filled with hope. Friends, even when we are feeling our lowest, when we're feeling the most amount of pain, Jesus appears to offer us hope. And he can offer you new life today. Maybe for the first time that, that you can put your faith and trust in Jesus. You can find meaning and purpose for your life. You can find hope for this life, even in the midst of the suffering and the pain of this world. Jesus has not forgotten you. He's not forgotten this world. He will make all things new. But the kingdom can come right now in your situation. It's both now and not yet. With Jesus coming, the kingdom came, but it will reach its full consummation when he comes again because he rose from the dead. He ascended back to heaven. He reigns. And one day he is coming back. But maybe today is a day when you can put your faith in Christ. You can find that hope for this life and for the next in Jesus. Life without him really has no point. It was a great philosopher who was an atheist, Bertrand Russell, who once said, unless you assume a God, the question of life's purpose is meaningless. It's only Jesus who can bring true meaning to life. He offers you new life today. For those who are his followers, he comes and often he meets us and reveals himself to us at the point of our greatest pain. He's there. He's with us. He can lead you into the hope that he has won for you. Trust in him. Rely on him. We find hope for the present. But secondly, we see the mystery and beauty and hope for the future. Not only does the death and resurrection of Jesus mean we don't have to go through life feeling trapped and hopeless, but it also means we have a hope for the future, a hope that when we die, there is something more. Philip Yancey describes a unique funeral custom conducted by African uh, religious groups in a particular country. Close family and friends circle the casket and quietly gaze at the body. There's no singing, there's no flowers, there's no tears, and a peppermint candy is passed to everyone. At a signal, each one puts the candy in his or her mouth. When the candy is gone, each participant is reminded that life for this person is over. They believe life simply dissolves. They believe life simply dissolves. You know, if you believed that there was nothing beyond death, that life is just over, how would that affect your hope for the future? That death was the end. There was nothing more. How would that affect your hope for the future? Friends, the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, what we as Christians call the good news or, or the gospel, offers us the hope that after death we will live again. As I mentioned earlier, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me, even though they die, they will live again. As we read earlier, 1 Corinthians 15, 50 to 55, we're told there, where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? That passage is in some ways quite difficult to understand, but Paul is talking to a group of people who are denying that there is any hope for Christians after they die. A group of false teachers who were saying it's impossible that the resurrection happened. And Paul restores hope to all of us by saying that because Jesus rose from the dead, we no longer have to fear death. There is no sting for us. In fact, it's something to look forward to. Where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, 
Oh, death is your sting. It's a picture just appearing now on the screen of a, a dragonfly. Dragonflies are actually some of the meanest looking insects in the world. Yet they are completely harmless. They have no sting. They have no bite. And the dragonfly is a lot like death for the person who has decided to follow Jesus. Death still kind of looks mean. There is something in it that can still make us a little afraid. But Jesus offers us the hope that death is just like that dragonfly. At times it can look mean. It can be a bit scary looking. But it has no sting. It has no bite. It cannot hurt us anymore. Friends, Jesus can give hope for the present and guarantees hope for the future even beyond death. Thomas Schmidt tells a tragic story at the end of his book on Easter, A Scandalous Beauty, it's called. On a fine day at a picnic, his nine-year-old daughter, Susanna, and her mother were on a hay wagon crossing a little creek. Suddenly the horses bolted and the wagon overturned. Everyone jumped off to safety except Susanna, who was found several hours later drowned. The last words in his book, which is all about hope for the present and for the future, say this. It matters to me that death no longer has any power over us. It matters to me that it's true. It's not merely interesting. The chaos of this life, the floods of water have closed in over my head. Yet I choose against despair. I believe that death one day will die. That the love of God will prevail. In the meantime, I will follow Jesus in trust and hope until I see Susanna again. Not far from my apartment overlooking the sea, there is a marker on a new grave that bears the name of my only child and the following inscription with joy still deeper than pain gently flows the river where we shall meet again friends the christian hope jesus is risen he is risen indeed it's true he's alive he's the tomb breaker he's the world shaker there's power in his name and Jesus, through trusting in him, you can know hope for the present. Hope through all the twists and turns and the, the challenges of life. That he's with you, that he's leading you, that he's guiding you, that he's sovereign, that he's in control. But you can also know hope for the future, even beyond death. This talk has not been about the proofs for the resurrection. It's not giving you evidence that demands a verdict. That's, it can be a talk for another day. That could be a sermon for another day. But what I hope I have presented to you is an amazing gift. It's a gift given to us because of the reality that Jesus died and rose again. It's the gift of amazing hope for a life filled with joy and abundance here on earth. Uh, and it's a gift of amazing hope that even though our bodies might die, we will never feel the sting of death. And may this mystery, this beauty, this hope transform your life this Easter. In Jesus, we can find new life. We can experience a resurrection life. He said... John 10.10, 10, the thief comes to steal, kill and destroy, but I have come to give life and life in all its fullness. Let me just finish with a story. It's a story about Albert Einstein when he was traveling on a train. On one particular day, the train was packed. Um, there were so many people, the conductor was collecting the, the tickets or stamping the tickets. And he came to Dr. Einstein and he asked for his ticket, but Dr. Einstein couldn't find his ticket. Eventually the man said, listen, don't worry, I know who you are. I'm sure you would have bought a ticket, I trust you, um, and carried on. As he got to the end of the carriage, the conductor looked back and he saw Dr. Einstein on the ground, scrambling about, looking for his ticket still. And um, he went back to Dr. Einstein, he said to him, listen, I've told you already, I know 
who you are. You don't need to find your ticket. I know who you are. And Dr. Einstein looked up at him and said, listen, I also know who I am. What I don't know is where I am going. You know, I want to ask you honestly today, do you know where you're going? Do you know that when you die, that you are going to that place called heaven? If you put your faith in Jesus Christ, you know that guarantee. If you do not, I encourage you today to put your faith in Jesus Christ, to trust in Christ. You know, life without Jesus is like an unsharpened pencil. There's no point. He is the hope for the world. He is your hope, your only hope. Put your trust in him today. If you are a believer, live in that wonderful hope. In the midst of the challenges and the joys and the sorrows, live with that hope that you have in Christ. And even when that final day comes, know that you are guaranteed life in all its fullness for all eternity. What a hope we have in Christ for this life and the next. Hallelujah. What a saviour. He's saviour and he's Lord. Let me just pray. I'm going to lead you in a prayer and if you would like to put your faith in Christ today or recommit your life to Christ this Resurrection Sunday, please do it. He's real. He'll hear your prayer. I guarantee he'll answer this prayer. Let's pray. God, I just thank you that you love us. Just please repeat these words after me if you want to pray. Lord, I thank you that you love us. I thank you that you made us in your image. Thank you that you loved us so much that you sent Jesus to die on the cross for us. Today I confess my sins to you, God. I ask for your forgiveness. I ask that you'll come into my life. that I commit to give myself to you and to live my life to bring glory and honour to your name. I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that Jesus is Lord. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, I will guarantee you that God has come into your life and that he will lead you every step of the way into the future. Please tell a Christian friend uh, just so that they can be encouraged and they can encourage you. Um, speak to myself if you'd like. You can get in touch with me via the, the office. Um, please do that. But I'll be praying that God will continue to speak into our lives. And we're going to just sing now um, and respond to God's word um, as we worship. So let's sing.
Well, it's been a real joy to share this time together today. I want to just finish with a prayer just in a moment. But I just trust that you will live in the hope that God has won for you in Christ. You're not alone. God's with you. He's got plans for you to prosper you. His plans are for a future and for a hope. Uh, keep connected to your church family. Keep connected to God and live in that hope. He's the hope of the nations and in him we have a living hope. Let's pray. Almighty God, through the raising of your son from the grave, you broke the power of death and condemned death itself to die. As we celebrate this great triumph, may we also make it a model for our living. Help us to identify in our lives all that should rightly die. Redundant relationships, tired habits, fruitful longings. Resurrect in our lives faith, hope and love. As surely as you raised Jesus Christ from the grave. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a blessed Easter weekend. See you soon.